Hello, welcome to Africa's Numero Uno Tech Show on television, where we look at issues, trends, developments in the global ICT industry. We also play host to tech innovators, big thinkers, the professionals, and the CEOs who are driving today's tech economy. Our guest personality of the week is the Chief Marketing Officer of Squad, Mr. Ademi Atonda. I'm sure you'll like this conversation. Stay with us. There's no way you want to talk about digitization without talking about fraud. Because the way that we have people that are going about their legitimate business of ensuring that processes are digitized, that same way we also have people who wake up every day and all that they do is experiment with loopholes that might have been in those solutions. So to that extent, fraud will always be a part of our life. That's the honest truth. What we try to do is to reduce the incidence of fraud as much as possible. And again, there's some, some sort of a lacuna because the more you try to tighten security, the more you also reduce the user experience and the ease of use for those solutions. So our job is to always find a sweet spot between high security and high user friendliness. To your point, why do we still have fraud in the industry? I think that one of the problems that we see in the industry today is a lack of awareness for the end users. Because no matter how much of technology we deploy to protect funds and protect digitization and protect digital payments as a whole, the last mile, the weakest link in the chain is that individual who is actually doing the transaction himself. That's the weakest link. So if that individual does not have the requisite understanding of fraud fingerprints, before they know it, they will have divulged all the necessary information that are meant to protect them. So lack of awareness of the latest fraud trends and the latest fraud uh, patterns, that's one thing that I think is still making fraud so prevalent in the industry. Secondly, I think that we as practitioners too, we have not prosecuted the few frosters that we have been able to apprehend to the, to the last. Because the cost of prosecution for us sometimes could be too, too high compared to what you are really trying to protect in terms of time that you have to dedicate to it. So, for us to reduce fraud, we have to find a way to be able to prosecute to the very last every case of fraud, particularly the ones that we're able to apprehend and lay our hands upon. And I think maybe the third one um, that has also, uh, that's still making fraud to, stick, to arrive in the industry is, I, will, I don't want to use the word lack of collaboration, but that's what it is really. I mean, when an incident happens, Everybody needs to be open about it, to say, this is what has happened in my company. Be on the lookout for it on your own end. And I don't want to be the first one to say that because there could be a brand implication to that, you get. So everybody just try to cut to guard their tough a little bit until it blows in everybody's faces. So I think that on the converse, if you take care of customer awareness and education, if we find a way to prosecute and investigate fraud to the very last, and if we also become more collaborative in solving those problems, I think we'll reduce fraud to a very large extent. Well, I'll be careful in saying that, uh, because in saying that is to indict even ourselves. Yeah. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that there are bad people everywhere. The fact of the matter. For us as a 
ourselves, we still see ourselves as ultimately responsible to our customers. I mean, they trusted us with their funds, so the least we can do is to ensure that we take care of it to the very best. Yeah. So there will be cases where the bank is a place. A place in the sense that every evidence on the table shows that this fraud could have been perpetrated even by the account holder himself. There are cases like that where, where it becomes totally impossible for the bank to prove that a third party actually did this. On those kind of cases, of course, it would be difficult to, for us to try to recover the funds for the customer. But in other cases, where can be genuinely proven that there's actually a fraud in this place? I think that my colleagues in the industry are doing their best to try to retrieve those funds. And of course, the regulator also has uh, a system that keeps all of us honest. There's a consumer protection uh, department of the Central Bank of Nigeria where this kind of complaints go to and they work with us as bank to ensure that we remediate it and we take care, we compensate the customer as much as possible. So those kind of check and balances, even if some people in the industry want to say uh, it's not our concern, the money is lost, go and find it yourself. Those kind of check and balances always keeps us in check to ensure that as much as possible, we try to assist the customer in retrieving uh, and recovering whatever has been lost as much as possible. So and it's an ongoing effort. So I think that, particularly in the last five to ten years, we have seen a lot of innovation in the payment industry that has made life very easy for everyone. Yeah. Um, VSSD is one of them that has been able to bring digitization to the guy that, I mean, the customer that is at the bottom of the pyramid that doesn't have access to any sophisticated uh, technology infrastructure. The debit card, as simple as it is, has become a common word, I mean, a common tool for everybody. Um, POSs are there, ATMs are there, internet banking, web banking, all of those things. Wallet systems are coming up. So all of those things together have helped to push forward the central bank's policy of reducing cash in the economy. If you go by statistics, and you can confirm this from uh, NIPS, the Nigeria Interbank uh, Settlement System, if you go by statistics, on a year-on-year -year basis, we have been seeing a, a very wide and large adoption of digital technology for payments. Uh, the NIP is one of them, I mean, Interbank Transfer. Uh, I don't know the figures very well, but in leaps and bonds, it's been growing every year. And that's a reflection of the fact that some transactions that used to happen with cash before have found their way into the digital space. And of course, it's, that's the only way the economy can grow, by digitizing the process. Because that way, there is transparency. That's where you have record that you can use for business intelligence. That's where you can also tell how much of economic activity that is happening in a particular place per time. So I would say that all these innovations have aimed to push forward uh, the CBM policy of cashless. So in fact, we are actually at that point, at a very good point now, now that the currency is being changed and um, we're going through this process of reducing the volume of cash in the, in the economy. So I think you will even see more of forced adoption of digital channels more. So we are at that stage now. We are far from it. We are far from the point where we can say that cash is no longer king. But I think that we are doing a good job at trying to dethrone that king. Over time, we'll see the effects. I'm afraid that's how far time will allow us this week on this highly informative and educative package of your program. I'm Don Pedro Agambi, and on behalf of the entire production crew, thanks for watching. Please reach us on the numbers and email now showing on your screen. You can also watch this on our YouTube channel. I'll see you next time.